Hallelujah. Seems our teacher for today is running late. I will jump in. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this word. Why not just ask the Holy Spirit to help you during this time to be able to focus on his word. This is the time that we call Sunday school. It's the time that we, we come to school. We study. We try to understand the word, principle upon principle, precept upon precept. We, we want to receive all that there is from his word this morning. So on your own, where you are here in the, the building, where you are at home, just begin to ask God that, Lord, during this time, help me to focus on you. Help me to understand your word. Holy Spirit, come and have your way upon the speaker. Come and have your way upon the receiver. Myself, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We commit this time into your hands. We ask, O oh Lord, that you come and have your way. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. God is faithful. As we welcome our teacher to come this morning, I want to just remind us that you can um, get your Sunday school manual. We have copies of these manuals here in the church. They are five pounds. You can also download the Goshen Wells app. And um, the Goshen Wells app, you can also download the manual from there so that you have your copy and you can follow along with us. So once again, you're welcome in the building. You're welcome online. Let's welcome our teacher this morning to lead us in this morning's um, Sunday school till 11 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads. Let's talk to God. Let's ask that God Almighty Himself will teach us this morning. And as, as we learn under his feet today how to be a growing Christian that is filled with the Spirit of God, that God Almighty will help us to be able to put to practice all that we will learn today in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Today's topic is uh, spiritual growth, spiritual mat maturity, otherwise known as spiritual maturity. How, as a Christian, you grow spiritually from one strength to another, one grace to another. Amen. The memory verse for today will be taken from Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us therefore go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Hebrews 6, 1. Amen. We will read Hebrews again, the passage for today. Turn your Bible to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, we'll be reading from verses 12 to 14. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. Amen. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have needs, ye have needs that one teach you, again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and have become such, have need of mink and not of strong meat. 
13. For everyone that useth meek is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who, are, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to wisdom, both good and evil. Praise the Lord. The lesson introduction says, after salvation, every believer, every believer is expected to grow. You are not expected to remain stagnated after salvation. After you have given your life to God, it is expected of you to move on. Don't remain in one position. Like a child that is born today. When a child is born today, first and foremost, that child starts taking milk. From milk, it matures to lighter food, then later strong food. If you see a child that is born today, then after 10 years, that child is still feeding on mink. You know, there is a problem. Praise the Lord. That will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You will understand what we are trying to say here is that you as a child of God who is born again today, by the time we see you next year like this, you are not expected to be the same way as far as growth in the spirit is concerned. Amen. In the, in the verse, or verses we read earlier, you realize that Christ and Apostle Paul was teaching the Hebrews and he was telling them in a letter that a child who stays for meek forever, a child who is born today and continues to feed on just meek, no strong food, it means he's not skillful. He's not going to be having the strength to do things, what the things that men do, strong people do. So as a believer, if you are born again today and you remain stagnated, you are not growing, it means you are like that baby that was illustrated in Hebrews. Amen. And in the outlines, because we don't have time, we'll move to outlines immediately. Lesson outline one says the characteristics of a spiritual Christian. The characteristics of spiritual. How do you know a Christian that is filled with the Holy Spirit, that is living in, in, in according to the directive or the details of the Holy Spirit. One, a spiritual Christian lives as a son and not as a slave. Is he lives as a son and not as a slave. If you say you are a child of God, you know what children do, how children relate to their parents. A child of God cannot be behaving like a slave. A real Christian that is born again, that is filled with the Spirit of God, will not be living like a slave. We are going to check quickly the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 16, to 16 rather. It says here, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the Spirit of God, of bondage. You didn't receive the spirit of bondage. If you have the spirit of God in you, the spirit of God does not allow you to live in bondage. It means you cannot be a slave as a child of God. You cannot live in fear as a child of God. The spirit of God gives boldness. He gives, he energizes you. Praise the Lord. And say, so it doesn't give you, I mean, allow you to be uh, in bondage again or to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption. God has adopted you. You now have the power, you now have the boldness to say anywhere you go that you are a child of God. And as a child of God, you, you must exercise every spirit of boldness that God has deposited in you by adopting you as a father. He said, by whom you cannot cry, Abba, Father. You now have the, the liberty to call him Abba, Father. You're like a child who calls the father Papa, with every amount of boldness, with every amount of responsibility, 
as a child of God that is carrying the spirit of God, you have the liberty to cry to him, Abba, Father. That is why you, if, you, if you listen to our daddy, Joseph Rally Adeboye, he will, he, will, he will always say, my daddy, my daddy, my daddy. A child that is so, so boastful of his dad or her dad we go out anywhere and, and we say, my daddy, my daddy says this, my daddy says he's going to buy me a car, my daddy says he's going to buy me this, he's going to buy me this. And you, you say that with, if you do, are not the kind of a Christian that is having this Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you see, you will not be able to say that with confidence. My prayer this morning is that as a child of God, who has the Spirit, who God has adopted as his own child, that you have the boldness to proclaim it everywhere that God is your father. And he will answer you anytime you pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I say God will answer you anytime you pray in Jesus' name. You know, as children, when we call on our daddy, we have that confidence that he's going to, he's going to answer us. And like one pastor always say, he said, God, we all are children of God. Once you are born again, you are a child of God. He said, God does not have grandchildren. We are all what? Children of God. And as a child of God, you must take away every spirit of bondage, every spirit of slavery, every spirit of timidity, and talk to God and approach him as father and son. And he will answer you in the mighty name. Praise the Lord. Then he said, he is led by the Spirit of God. The Son of God is led by the Spirit of God. The daughter of God is led by the Spirit of God. There is no other spirit that dwells in you if you are a true child of God. You can see that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Because of time, we will not be able to read that. He bears the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, you understand the Spirit of the Spirit. You see then there, meekness, love, long-suffering. And all those things that are associated with the Spirit of God, the things that even once, when, when you are offended, you bear it. When somebody hates you, you show love. So these are manifestations of the Spirit of God in you. So then the C is, we are talking about the characteristics of uh, the one that is dwelling in the Spirit of God, the, the, the Christian that has the Spirit of God in him. Or her, it could, it could be a man, it could be a woman. He is mindful of spiritual things. He is mindful of spiritual things. You can check that in Romans chapter eight, verse five. Philippians, Philippians chapter two, verse five. Oh, would you quickly read Philippians two five? He is mindful of spiritual things. How do you are you mindful of spiritual things? You see here. He say, let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In a situation like this, you will want to understand when God is speaking to you as his child. You understand his language and he understands your language. You do not, you do not see, you do not, God is, will not be speaking to you. And you will be saying, uh, one thing is telling me in my heart that uh, I should not do this. No, you should be able to know immediately that this is the voice of God that is coming. If you watch our... I always make reference to our daddy Gio. If you watch him all the time, you will see him preaching at times. He will stop and say, my daddy says, my daddy says I should do this. He understands the spirit. There is, there is this uh, synergy between him and God. And that is how it should be for every child of God who is working in the spirit of God. He said he is free from the law. You see that in John chapter 8 verse 32. He's free from the law, he's free from, uh, and, um, I mean, the law and his condemnation. Because you are already walking in the spirit, there is no fear of a condemnation. There is no fear that you will be caught up with the law. There is no fear that you're going to break the law. Because everything that is embedded in that spirit of God is what is simplicity, I mean, uh, humility, is love, is long suffering, is forgiveness, is obedience. And there is no way, anyhow, that you will be found wanting by the law. Then the, the sixth one says, he has mortified the deeds of the flesh. Everything that ordinarily before you start having, decide having the spirit of God in you, you will fall to some of these uh, fleshy uh, 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 temptations. But since the spirit of God is in you, there will be no room for flesh to take place. 
There is no room for things of the flesh to, to, to woo you or to fall into temptations because the Spirit of God is dwelling in you. It's like light living in you where darkness cannot uh, comprehend. Darkness cannot dwell where there is light. Amen. The seventh one says, He is divinely guided and has spiritual insight. He has spiritual insight. It is easy for you as a child of God that is having the Spirit of God dwelling in you to always discern things. When things are happening, things of the Spirit, spiritual things, you capture them even before those that are not filled uh, fill with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13. Then say, peace is available with him. The Spirit of God gives what? Peace. Peace. The peace that surpasses all understanding. This peace that even no man can understand. And as a professor in uh, the open heaven of two days ago, that the Jew was talking about a professor whom God converted and, and told, after some time, called Jew and told him that these days I, I just see myself being happy. I just see myself being joyful all day. And the reason for that joyfulness is not known to this professor. And that Jew told him, you don't know, it perhaps because you now have peace dwelling in you. Because you now have God in you. So what we're, going to, what we're trying to say here is when the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, you will have what? Peace. In Mark chapter 11 verse 23, you will see that there. Outline too quickly. Signs of a spiritual, of spiritual maturity. How do we know that this man, this woman, is matured spiritually? One, you will see an appetite for strong meat. You will be desirous of doing greater things. You will be desirous of looking, strong, looking for strong meat. No longer talking about meat, meat and stuff. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12, you find it there. Not yielding to personal offense. Nobody can, you cannot get offended easily. Even when things, you can see that also in, in Philippians chapter 1. I'm rushing now because time, time is gone. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15 to 18. Not you to personal offense. Then three, conscience informed by scripture, not opinions. When you want to take decisions, you will always be guided by the scripture, not, not what people say, not how you feel. It's how the spirit of God directs you to feel. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. You see that there, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, the sense of humility when you... A sense of humility when you used by God in ministry. You will be very humble. You will be very humble when it comes to things of God. You will be very, very humble. That's even when you see a man that you feel by status in society and everything, that you are bigger than, you will still bow down and tell him, sir or ma. This, the, the eighth one is a tendency to give credit to spirit, spiritual growth to God, not people. When you are growing spiritually, the signs for people to know that this man, this woman is actually having the spirit of God growing in him is who you give your credit to. Will you say, oh, all glory to God, or you give glory to man, or you give glory to yourself? You say, you want to say, I am, I am too much, I know how to study very well. No. For you to know that this man is actually carrying the spirit of God, you see the man keep giving all glory to God, all glory and adoration to God and, spirit, and the spirit of God. And that will be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not be arrogant, we will not be proud to be packed, taking all glory, even the glory we're supposed to go extend to God, to ourselves in Jesus' name. In summary, in summary, it said Christian, Christians are expected to be spiritual and not carnal. The signs of maturity must be evident in their life. If you are a Christian, it's not just for the sake of uh, uh, feeling from, are you a Christian or Muslim? Say, I'm a Christian. No. There must be signs of this spiritual maturity in you. It must be evident in you. Everybody must know you by the way you relate to people that this is a child of God that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads quickly. Let us pray. Let us ask that God Almighty will help us to live, to have all these spirits, the Holy Spirit grow in us to help us not to remain babies even as we've been delivered that we will grow from meek to light food, then strong food in the mighty name of Jesus that we want to do exploits to God in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet this morning. Once again, you're welcome to church. Welcome those that are here.
Welcome those that are joining us online. We are so happy you could be here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you that you have taught us this morning. We thank you that we have come to school on Sunday. We are happy. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way in the rest of this meeting as we worship you. Help us to worship in spirit and in truth. Remove distractions from us. Help us to focus on you and you alone in this time. Make our lives a sacrifice to you. And Lord, as we go through this service, take complete charge of every single thing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. And everybody said amen. And amen. It's time to praise and worship the Lord. Welcome the praise team to lead us in praise and worship. of our welfare and our canal, but that they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles.
worship.
Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we just lift our hands to heaven? Something wonderful is coming. Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your voice to him. Say, Father, have your way in me. Let your cancer stand and let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Father, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Let your cancer stand and let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I have come as it is written in the volume of your book to do your will. Let your will be done in my life in Jesus' mighty name. Father, have your way, oh Lord. In our family, in our homes, in our soul, in our hearts. Have your way. Take preeminence in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We bless you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Psalm 50 says, Gather unto me all my saints together those that have half coming with me with sacrifice we want to come to the Lord with our heart open and say Father Father do something new in my life in the mighty name of Jesus begin to pray for something new something wonderful a new touch in the name of Jesus the Bible said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former say Father do something new in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in our homes, in our marriage. Father, we commit it to your able hand. Do something wonderful, something new, something excellent in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. I know as we gathered here, and as some people are watching us, looking up onto us online, I know your heart to be praying. And I know your mouth will be saying prayers. You want to lift your hands to say, Father, Father, let my prayers be set before you like an incense in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Let our prayers today as we be uttering unto you our prayers from the bottom of our heart, our heart desire, let it be set before you like a sweet smelling savo. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let our prayer be, let, it, let them come to your hearing in the name of Jesus. And let answer come speedily. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, we worship you. In the name of Jesus. The book of Genesis says something powerful. Genesis uh, chapter 8 verse 1, it said that the Lord remembered Noah and all the enemy that are with him in the ark. And he began to do a lot of things. So you want to pray, to, you want to cry to the Lord, say, Father, Remember me in the name of Jesus. Remember my household. Remember my marriage. 
Remember my academics. Remember my business. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember my failure. Remember with the blood of Jesus. Father, we appreciate you. We honor you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we just want to thank you. We we'll bless you. We believe that something new is coming on our way. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. We worship you. We cover this sanctuary with the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let your cancer stand and let your will be done. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Can somebody give Jesus a cup of hallelujah? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please have your in the church have your seats at home make yourself comfortable hallelujah but not too comfortable <laughs> we want you to come and give your testimony especially if you're here in the house not just right this second but in a minute we want you to share your testimony of what god has been doing you're joining us online you can put your testimony in the live chat on youtube on facebook and we will read them out for you i'm here to welcome us especially I'm so excited to see um, all of us here and for all of you joining online, I'm so happy you took the time to come and be with God in this time. I want to especially welcome those that might be here for the first time. If you're joining us for the first time online, there will be a Google form in the comments on Facebook and YouTube. Please complete the form so that we can keep in touch with you and know how to pray for you. And if there's anyone here, I know there is, if you're, when you're here for the first time in the building today, um, could you just wave your hands so we can welcome you? I know there's some of you here for the first time. You're welcome. God bless you. We are happy. We have a beautiful song that we usually sing to you. There's Grace. Beautiful song. Yes. In the name of the Lord, may you May you really be blessed. 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 As we fellowship here in the midst, in the name of the Lord, may you really be blessed. May that you will be really blessed we have um, given you a form if you're here in the building please again just help us fill that out so we can keep in touch with you and get to know you better please when you finish you can just give back to the ushers um, that is um, um, Henry at the door and um, we also have patients who give the forms to you um, some announcements before we continue. We pray every morning online via free conference call. That's um, every morning 6 to 7. Please do come and join those prayers. On Wednesdays, we have our Bible study here at least twice, if not three times during the week. And we can rearrange the seats. All right. Um, also want us to make mention of the fact that there are many um, volunteering opportunities in the church. We, um, we need many volunteers for different departments. For example, in ushering, we need people to help with ushering. We need people to help with updating our website um, on a weekly basis. We need help with our social media pages. Um, in the church, we need um, people for our cleaning department, sanitation. We need um, people for hospitality so that um, there can be food provided for us to take away every Sunday. We need, of course, people for the praise team, instrumentalists. We need people for community outreach. Um, we have seen already this morning so many people coming to our door um, are in need. And we want to be able to take the details of those people, go to their houses, see what we can do for them. Community outreach is very important. It might be something as simple as helping to, you know, in the summer, helping with their gardening. It might be at the minute to do some shopping for them. Whatever we can do to be a blessing to our community, we need people for that department and also the audiovisual department. So if you know that you can help in any of these departments, please get in touch with Pastor. You can send him a text, WhatsApp, email, info at chapelofgrace.org.uk or just speak to him in person. Amen. And um, what we ask is that for those that are beginning to serve in the church, that um, 
There's a training program that we do just to let you know what um, we expect and what is required and so on. That is called workers in training. The workers in training this time can take place online. And um, we ask that you give your name, you want to volunteer, um, or you're already volunteering and you know you haven't done that, please see pastor. Um, also, um, let us remember that anytime we are in the church, thank you, everyone is doing so well in remembering to wear our masks. It's important to keep us all safe that we wear our masks and, you know, the church provides masks in case you don't have your own. You can feel free to bring your own and then the ones that are here are for those who might have forgotten to bring their own. Um, next week, Sunday, is Valentine's Day. Hallelujah. It's a day where we celebrate love and the best love of all is the love of Jesus. And so with that, we want to reach out to our community with love on Valentine's Day. And so what better way to go out on a day that many people are feeling that they, they may not be loved. Let's go and show them the love of Jesus. And so we want to have another community food outreach next week, Sunday. And also, I believe, for in the house as well. Hallelujah. So what we did the other time, we'll be doing again next week. I'm sure Pastor will give us more of the details. So that's all from me for now. I want to give over to Pastor as we come and share our testimonies. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Quickly, we just want to take some testifiers. Amen. If you have a testimony you want to share of uh, what the Lord has done, I've seen Rita, number one, any other person, two, is that melody good? All right, any other person? Okay. Can I have the Trinity, number three, and that will be it today. Amen. When you come in, don't touch the microphone. Just stand and then and um, just share your testimony in one minute. Rita, please. Okay. In one minute. Don't touch anything. Just stand by the microphone and the Lord will uh, name will be glorified. Amen. Okay. Just go ahead and, and uh, share your testimony. God bless. Ooh, slap. Use your, your, your fixed mask if you have one. That will have been. Yes, please. God bless you so that you don't spit into it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Rita, do you hear me? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. My name is Rita and I am Hungarian. I want to give thanks to God <clears throat> for his mercy in my language. Can I, can I, can I, can we, will you explain it in English for us? <laughs> because your English is very clear. Okay, go ahead. Thanks to God for his mercy in my language. Okay. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Rita is uh, Hungarian and Slovakia. Amen. Uh, yeah, Hungary is a beautiful place. I've been there a couple of times, at least three times. Uh, wonderful place. Hallelujah. Sister Melody, let's clap for Sister Melody. Yeah, you can go ahead with yours. Yeah. Come in. Stand so that people can see you. God bless you, man. All right. It's not working. It's working. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Um, I have a, a whole lot of things. Your name for. and My the name test. Summarizing since I have only one minute. Firstly, I want to thank God for His love and His mercy. I keep telling people that if I, if God dealt the cards I give people, I wouldn't be standing today, and it's quite true. His love, it, it, it moves past every single thing. It looks into you, and it's pure, it's unconditional. And I, I just look at it, and I'm like, how does He keep on loving me this way? Sometimes I look at how I criticize people. I look at them, I you know, berate them, and it's like I come to his presence still, and he still forgives me. How do you do it? And it's just, that's it. That's who he is. He loves you for who you are. He knows that you're prone to sin. He knows that you're prone to, you know, doing things, people holding grudges. But still, he still wants you to come to his presence, and he will still give you mercy when he asks for it. Secondly, I want to thank God for his grace. Like you all know, I've been, the church has been doing um, a 21 day fasting. Now it's actually 60, but it's 21 this time on mercy. And I want to thank God that throughout this, the first 21 day period and this 21 day period, like, has been giving me grace to move on. I didn't know I would be able to do a fast down this long because I usually just do one one. That's the maximum. But He has given me grace. He keeps pushing me on past my limits. He keeps showing me much mercy than usual. and. I, I just thank him so much for everything. And lastly, I want to thank God too for putting people around me who are there to encourage me, who are there to lift me up. I have a pastor, I have an, um, Pastor Andrea, I have the choir, I have my parents who are always calling on the phone, I have friends and families. I want to thank him for every single thing that he has done in my life. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's clap for Jesus. Wonderful. Father, we thank you for those testimonies. We seal all with the blood of Jesus. Next time. Amen. No, there are two. Hallelujah. I identify two people unless the person is jumping in. Amen. I didn't see the third hand. Sorry. Okay. Did I, was there any third hand? No, I, made, I said I wanted Trinity. I was waiting for the third person, but it never showed up. But come on, come along. God bless you, man. Let's clap for his dickiness grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your name and the testimony, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Grace, and I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and that of my family. I want to thank God for so many things, but... I'm just going to summarize it in the song. I'm so overwhelmed with joy. He's been so faithful. If I look at in every facet of my life, he's just been so faithful. He just shows up even when I make a prayer point. And I don't know how it works. People just keep asking me, that, how do you do it? But the truth is, I don't even know how I do it. But I just know that his love and his mercies has just been just in front, beside, behind, everywhere. I want to just give him glory with this song. You're who you are yesterday, today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never change, you never fail. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God. I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life. 
Amen. God is faithful. And we thank God for all the testifiers and the testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are watching, if you are online, please, you want to testify of God's goodness, just send it on and we'll just share with the brethren. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, I just really want to appreciate everyone for coming today. And, um, and I pray that the Lord will honor your coming in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, is the PowerPoint ready? Okay. Can I have, is it Andrew or which, which of them? Andrew or Ola? Okay. Andrew, come over. I need you, please. I want you to share on the, on the technical um, stuff, your instruments. Who, has, who, who did the PowerPoint? Okay, Andrew, you come over then quickly. Well, quickly, in the next two, three minutes, we just want to uh, share what we um, shared last Sunday about the, we want to upgrade, is that the word? Um, the equipment um, of the church. We, whatever you, you are seeing, I think we did that some, some seven, eight years ago. Amen. Some seven, eight years ago, 2013. Yes. All this, all that, from Rock Tech, all the, everything within. We bought the building 2012 in November 14, specifically. We signed the documents. Then January to December, we did the total, all the renovation of this place, 2013, with all the equipments, and that was about 50,000 pounds in 2013. In 2014, we bought the chairs, we changed the chairs, we bought 300 chairs, each one 28 pounds. Amen. Brethren, some bought one, some bought two, some bought five, some bought ten. And that's how we got the 300 chairs. Then the second year, 2015, the next year, 2015, we did the second building, another 50,000 pounds, a community building over there. And where we're going is, for some time, the media, our choir and the media team, they've been saying that we need the change of our gadgets. They're outdated. And they've come out with some prizes for us to work with. So I want them to share with us briefly in one, two minutes, just run through the, your PowerPoint, what you've sent across to the church pastorate. Go ahead, sir. All right. Good morning, church. Can you just stand up here? God bless you. Let us see you. Good morning, church. Um, just um, a quick, um, I don't know, rundown to what's happening. So the, the equipments we have right now have really served. They've been quite, I mean, they've been quite, um, quite useful and then reliable. But obviously, they've seen better days. And with us bringing in more equipment and, and um, gadgets and gears, it's um, the equipments are beginning to fail because obviously, like you can see, we have we have more people singing, more more equipment running. So we're just trying to upgrade what we already have. Um, I don't know if the powerpoints will come up at any time. So um, what we have, the desk we have right back there, is first of all is used up, and some of them are failing. That's why you get some 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 feedback sounds, and then. The speakers also are failing. So we've just tried to put the, the purchase in two faces. The first is to... We can make it in one face. Okay, yeah, we can make yeah. it in one face. I'm working with one face. Yes. Amen. Okay. Okay. I want the full one. God is a full God. Amen. So. Amen. Hallelujah. Just one of us can just buy it, isn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. Just tell us the full price. How much the full price? <laughs> All of it comes to about fifteen thousand pounds. Fifteen thousand pounds. Yeah. We can. We are more than able. I thought people would be happy to clap. Amen. Their hands let's <laughs> let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Don't be intimidated by prizes. Yeah. Hallelujah. If we can survive COVID nineteen, we can survive anything. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And, sir, I don't know if I can just say so. Just, just go ahead. We with with that we'll be able to to change our back desk, which is which is the mixer we use right now, to a digital one and then would afford us less, less cables. So that's a digital mixer that can send a wireless signal to the front. Mm. And then 
These kind of speakers are called line array speakers. Okay, um, I don't want to interrupt you. You want to talk like a marketer. Okay. That, that people will buy it. Okay. Amen. So, All right. Because we are we are doing together. We are I mean, we're gonna invest into it. So you have to sell it to us so that we can be excited to to buy the product. So, All right. So what what this does basically is because if not for the lockdown, we have had a set of uh, music. Um, like Nathaniel Basu was supposed to come last year, but we couldn't have him again because of the lockdown. So we are having something that would, would allow us to have just any musician around the world to come into this building and can have good sound because it's digital. And then it can, it can send wireless signals from the back to the front. So how and much is this one? This is just about 2,500. Four hundred pounds, something okay. like that. Okay, two thousand. Two thousand four hundred pounds. Our, the engineers and the mathematicians take record. The next one. So and then we have the, I think the, that's the snake cable. So this sends, this receives signals from the one you saw first, and that's just, um, that that comes to. Nine hundred and eighteen pounds. So I would expect that two friends can body up and just buy this one, maybe, or one family will take that up and just go and ahead. just buy that. Then we. Would have um, the line array speakers. What we have presently is just one module of of these, and so because of the of the uh, of the need, we have, we've been driving it so hard, and that's why it gives that feedback. So we'll be having just four four modules so that we can drive them at a low frequency, and it's crisp clean for us. So that's this is ten thousand two hundred ninety pounds. It is well, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then we have just few bits and pieces, 47 pounds, the, the cable, and um, I think we have, we need, the, there's a bass guitar, it's not there, and then, and the personal monitors. Okay, so in total, everything is what? 15,000 pounds. We've already gotten a thousand pounds, amen? Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. I so, think somebody has somebody's also willing to give five hundred. Okay, somebody bring five hundred. I think five hundred. Yeah. Not I think somebody. So five hundred. Yes. I'm, I've got five, one thousand pound. So five hundred. That's one five. Okay. No. Send me the name and the money. Amen. So we have a thousand five hundred. Let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we're looking at maybe some. How much left? The thirteen thousand five hundred. 13,500 within a total. Another 500. 2,000. Okay, so we have 13,000. It's God's house. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we've got 2,000 pounds already for that project of 15,000 pounds. Amen. So please, um, if you allow me, definitely I will put it on the chart every Sunday. Amen. Wherever we are. So for now, we have on 2,000 pounds. Let's have a barometer. Media team or choir have a barometer everywhere we've got to. Let's put it for everybody to see where we are. Amen. And uh, that's how it works. That's our word. It works. Amen. And the Lord will do it for us so that we can have the likes of Pastor, Pastor Nat Labasi back again. He wants to come even in the midst of COVID 19. We're just saying that. No, please just bear with us. And so many, many things that we want to do as a church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, even for that presentation. We pray that you, that is more than enough. Agai 2, 8 says, the silver is yours, the gold is yours. You are more than able to even do that within the next few weeks, that, so that the sound and the quality and everything work perfectly, excellently. Yes, all to your glory. Yes, for those that uh, believe in God for a job, provide for them. Those that want to sow and say, oh, I wish I can be part of this. Lord, Turn things around for us all. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you excited? Amen. Quickly open your Bibles. It is Thanksgiving Sunday. We are where we are, 10, 10 minutes to 12 o'clock. The Lord will have mercy on us. Philippians 1 verse 6. We've been dealing with impact as a church. Impact. Uh, this is our year of impact. And we've been dealing with with the word impact, the eye, we said is influence and any other thing that you want to consider the eye to be. We went to M, mandate, then mission. We want to P, purpose, preparedness, perseverance. And we started 
the A last week on availability. And it was an awesome time in God's presence. And today we want to continue with the A. Somewhere on Friday, it came up that I said I will continue with the A and I'm going to deal with attitude. Attitude. Hallelujah. So this morning I'm speaking briefly on developing a kingdom attitude. Developing what? A kingdom attitude. Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that your word will do us good, heal the sick, set captives free, deliver the oppressed, that your word will do miracles. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Developing a kingdom attitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. The eating in this building has been on since, last, since, since yesterday, 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. when the choir came in. All right. So, and uh, we're trying our best to make sure that we meet the uh, the, 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 the COVID-19 regulations. That's why we have the doors open. Amen. That's why we, have, we just have to bear briefly. The eating has been on since last, uh, yesterday, 6 p.m. And you know what that means, you know, to the church for over 13, how many, 14, 15 hours by now. Okay? So please just bear with us briefly. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians 1 verse 6. That being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is attitude? What is just follow me briefly this morning? What is attitude? Attitude is a settled way of thinking. Attitude is a settled what way of thinking or feeling about something. A settled way that is it has been it has become part of your being. A settled way of thinking or feeling about something or someone. There are four types, four types of attitude, four types of attitudes and behaviors. Uh, I found out four. One is positive attitude. Positive attitude. This is one type of attitude uh, that we normally see we, in organizational behavior. Uh, of course, maybe because of my recent things on business and management now. Positive attitude. You see a worker, you can easily identify the type of attitude the person is uh, manifesting. Then there's what we say negative attitude. And that can cost you a lot if you are someone of that kind of attitude. Negative attitude. You know, uh, and this is one that everybody should avoid. In your classrooms, in your workplace, in your families, in your relationships, negative attitude, avoid it. Amen. And there's what we call neutral, neutral attitude. Neutral what? Attitude. People with a neutral attitude don't give enough importance to situations or events. They're just neutral. Wear face masks, they will not wear face masks. Wear this, they will not. Wash and they will not. Just neutral. It's their lifestyle. And it's not the best. Amen. Not adhering to instructions. Neutral what? Attitude. Neutral attitude. They ignore the problem. Leaving it for someone else to solve. They don't feel the need to change. This is how I am. Complacence. Just like that. I don't care. Attitude. Neutral attitude. And that's what we call the fourth type is what? The first one is what? Positive. Go with me. The number two. Negative. The number three. Number four is seeking attitude. Seeking what? S-I-K-K-E-N. Seeking attitude. And this is the most dangerous attitude. Amen. This year, if we are to make impact, and, uh, and I believe we want to make impact, then we will have to manifest the right kind of attitude. In the mighty name of Jesus. Seeking attitude. This is the most dangerous attitude because it reflects the state of minds 
you know, the state of mind, you're being, being negative. It's beyond just negative attitude. It's become, it's, it, it, it has become like what, like, 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 like a, like a sting. People can't stay around you. It sickens people. Hallelujah. So attitude is what we normally liken to an uncooperative behavior. People want to work with you, but your attitude is not, is, is normally, most often, we consider attitude to be this type. When you say somebody has an attitude, we don't normally refer to it as, as being positive. That this person is uncooperative. He has an attitude. And the Lord will help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm jumping my lines now for the time we have. Your attitude is everything when it comes to following God. Even in following God, your attitude matters. Our attitude matters. Of course, in marriage, attitude matters. Boys and girls, attitude matters. When you meet a young boy, a young girl, your attitude matters. I always refer to those days when we were here in Bradford and PhD and we had all the young graduates, uh, undergrad and the master students all around us being a bachelor. Of course, I must choose one one day. Amen. Single brother is not a cause. Amen. It's required that we marry one day. So, and we're looking at all around us among the sisters that are coming around and we begin to look at the art beyond being born again. We're looking at the attitude. Hallelujah. Beyond just tongue speaking, beyond just born again, beyond just being a church goer, we were trying to look at the attitude. One or two things in that you know, instance, we will see somebody will come, and of course, you, you have to give a cup of tea or whatever is being provided. Then the person is going, and the person will say, Can I have a tea bag? Are you getting me? And the person, you will give the person, Oh, I love this tea. Can I have a tea bag? And the person will go and you come back and say, so you are not yet married. You are begging the tea bag from a brother. You just strike that one out. This is not it at all. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Amen. It's, become, it's not a negative attitude. It's a seeking attitude. Or someone will come and after you've provided a meal, so whatever I'm doing, yeah, as a pastor, I've been doing it as, a, as, as, a, as an individual, not a pastor. As a student, my ass was open for every student in the university. Hallelujah. Someone will come and add a meal, and the person will say, can you add me some cups of rice? And you wonder, we are friends, fine. You are a sister, fine, but you've eaten well, fine. So most do not ask for cups of, with all the lipsticks, it has become what? A seeking attitude. The Lord will have mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. How did we get there? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And you what? But of course, you will give. The person will go and you strike it out boldly. This one is no way. Because if you get married to that one, before you know it, they were begging a cup of rice from the neighbor. Hallelujah. And the Lord will have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. So attitude is everything when it comes to God. For Paul, Philippians 1, verse 3 to 6. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Paul was excited about the church he was writing to. In Philippi, he said, I thank my God for every, every time I remember you, I thank my God. Can that be said about you? I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy because of who you are. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You've done so well. And I'm praying for you that the Lord that has enabled you to do well will continue 
to keep you doing well in good attitude. Hallelujah. In the right attitude. Amen. So Paul is saying your attitude means a lot to me. Your attitude what, means a lot to me. Then he continued in chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. He said, in Philippians 2, verse 1 and 2, he said, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, because of who you are, if we are to continue, walk in unity, in the right attitude. For some, people can walk with you because of attitude. So Paul was praying that, yes, in chapter 1 he said, you've done so well, continue. In chapter 2 he's saying that, please continue to walk in love, in the right attitude, in unity, in fellowship, in love. So he's saying here, yeah, I admire how you demonstrate a Christ-like, a, 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 no, no, a, a Christ-centered attitude. Joyfully, you are working together. Continue. And we will joyfully work together this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. So some few things to know quickly. Your attitude generates power. There is power in your attitude towards life. If you have the right kind of attitude, there's so much power, so much energy that can be generated in the right attitude. Negative attitude will drain you. Amen? The right kind of attitude will give you power. And you will have power. In the mighty name of Jesus, your attitude generates power. So what do we consider as godly attitude? And that we may answer quickly this morning. Then how do we overcome bad attitudes? The Lord will have mercy on us. Now notice, next to salvation, and I'm saying it boldly, next to salvation, nothing is more important than having a good, positive attitude. Next to salvation, nothing is as good as having a good word, positive attitude and you will demonstrate a good positive attitude in the name of Jesus. Your attitude can make you or can break you. Your attitude can make you friends or make you enemies. Your attitude can make you a success or make you a failure. It is said that you change your negative attitudes to positive ones and you can change the world. If you can change your negative attitudes to becoming positive, then you can change the world. It is your attitude and not your aptitude that determines your altitude in life. How far you will go depends on your attitude. It is your attitude and not your aptitude that determines your altitude, the height you will go in life. So we've known that we have attitudes. Some are good and some are bad. If you want to read more about attitude, read the, the book of one Dale Galloway. He, he wrote the awesome power of attitude. So three facts about attitude. Quickly, three facts about attitude. Three facts about attitude. Your attitude reveals the real you. Who you are is seen in your attitude. Number two, your attitude determines the success of every relationship. If you must succeed in your, relation, in, in your, in your associations, it is seen in your attitude. And number three, your attitude is always your choice. It's, it's your choice. You can choose to do better. Amen. You come to church late. It's your choice to come to church early. It is, it is your choice. Wake up early. Put your timer. Get to shower. Get yourself ready. It's your choice to change that attitude. It depends on you. It's a choice. So fact one. 
Your attitude reveals the real you. Your attitude is more important than your education and your money. It's more important than your education. People will see your attitude before they know whether you are educated or not. People will see your attitude before they know whether you have the money or you don't have money. Your attitude comes out from the core of your being. It's who you are. It, 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 it becomes part of you. Your attitude represents your disposition, your outlook, your very character. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Fact 2, your attitude determines the success and failure of every of your relationships in your life. The success and your failure, it must succeed in your associations. In life, then your attitude is key. You can never trust people with a bad attitude because they will do things that you will never thought they will do. You can't trust people with a bad attitude because at some point, they will do things that you never thought that they would do. Most people are quarrelsome or they make up trouble. They do so not out of bad attitudes. But they do so because it has become part of them. Look at the case in Numbers, Numbers 12. The case of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. Moses married an Ethiopian eunuch, a Cushite. And Aaron and Miriam started a quarrel with Moses for just no reason. Just the fact that their brother married someone outside of their circle. They started a quarrel with Moses. Numbers 12. You can read from verse 1 to 11. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very humble. More than all men who were on the face of the earth. That was their brother, Moses. Very humble man. But for the fact that he married, it became a problem. So his brother Aaron, his sister Miriam... Despite the fact that their brother Moses is humble, they were not of that. Numbers 12 verse 1. We see both of them talking against Moses because of the woman he married. Now, the fact is that Moses married that Cushite woman. He married a Cushite woman, an Ethiopian you know. That wasn't the problem. That was not the problem. The real problem, the problem was not because he married somebody outside of them. That may be why, that may be what we see as a problem, but that wasn't the main problem. The main problem, in summary, was that Marian, she had a long standing bad attitude. So she cannot take it. So for every little thing, she can't control herself. She started talking. And I've come to know in counseling people along over the years that. You are always a third party. Marriage is between a man and a wife. So even the pastor, you are a third party. And there's, there's, there is a level we can go into your personal affair. John the Baptist tried it. And that was how he died. If you know the story of, of John the Baptist, how he died. He tried it. So as an individual, if you must intervene in someone's marriage, be careful. You are a third party. After all the counsels, you have to leave it for them. Just you go and sort it out. Amen. I will run through now. The third fact here is that your attitude is always your choice. Look at what someone said. He said, I was never in the top half of my class. Someone's how he, how he took life. He said, I was, never the top, I was never in the top half of my class, but I can say that I was in the group that made the top half possible. 
and attitude. It's just like when we say the glass is half full of water or it's what? It's half empty. He found that it wasn't the best. It was always behind the class. But he tried to make it in a good way. Hallelujah. I don't know, but I may have to, you know, it's sister over here. Hallelujah. God bless you, ma. When I was preparing, I wanted to make reference to you. Sister Obo, Sister Joy, who is not here. Evie, I think she's not here. Tolu, Brother Tolu. Brother Tolu is here. Brother Tolu is here. Yes, God bless you. Okay, someone, Sister Obo, got in contact with us right from our home country, Nigeria, West Africa. I was started communicating. Until the day she was arriving, the day she was boarding the flight, I knew. And all until she arrived at Bradford, I knew. She got to the hostel, I knew. Where she was staying, I knew. She came on a Friday. By the Friday evening, I've, I've gone to see her in the university halls. Amen. I'm talking about attitude. By the time she got to the university, that Friday, by the evening, I got to see her for the first time in life. Did what we can do as a church. Then she said, okay, I've got some few friends here. By the next day, I went over to the university again, see those two friends, you know, saw them or dropped some things for them. Amen. This was Friday, Saturday, not a Sunday. They were in quarantine season, so they couldn't come to church. By the next Saturday, They've not been to church. By the next Saturday, three of them, Tolu, Joy, and Sister Evie, who have not even met, they came to church by first coming to work for the church. They spent seven, eight hours packing food for community outreach. They've never been to church on a Sunday. The first time they came, they came to church on a Saturday morning, walking till about 4, about 4 p.m. And I said, Lord, this, they've not been to a church on a Sunday. Now, nah, they've, they've, they've started working for the church, working for God, I would say, before they could even attain a church service for a blessing. Then I was communicating with the person that referred Sister Joy to us, a former student, our sister Tolani Thomas. And she said, oh, I knew Joy will fit in very well to your system. Amen. And she really me walking. Even right before, this is the first time she's coming to church. She'll be walking behind the scene up to this day. Let's clap for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about attitude. And the Lord was reminding me as I was preparing. There are some people that we've been feeding for seven, eight years. Come to pack food for somebody, they will not come. Amen. No, there are some, as I was, this is what the Lord guided, this army guided me. As I was making the friends, I was being reminded about And the Lord said, but what about those that have been here for years? You've been feeding them in word and in every other. Come and do something. You have to beg and beg and beg and beg. Attitude. And the Lord said, tell them that change the attitude. And today we will change our attitude. For good in the mighty name of Jesus. If you read the book of Deuteronomy 30, 19, quickly, it says, I call heaven on head, I call heaven on head, as witnesses I know against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. I'm talking about attitude is a choice. Choose life. If you want to know more about that, I did a 60 seconds video, video on, uh, on, on choice. If you, where do we see that? Either you go to my blog, or you go to my timeline. I did, yeah, I did, a, uh, I did is this a minute or some three minutes? Yeah. On choice, on the power of choice. So yeah, we are reminded the choice we make will either take us to hell or take us to heaven. Let's have the right attitude. And I think I'm going to stop there this morning. I can't go further again. Hallelujah. But I will work on this quickly in the next one minute. 
how do we create a positive attitude? Number one, learn to speak positive words like Paul did. Number two, no matter what happens, look for good and you will find it. No matter what happens, look for good. I was reminded by, uh, what's the name? Amanda, Amanda Norman. Is that the name? The poet that read that beautiful poem at the U.S. inauguration. Yes. That young girl that read that poem, I, I, I did some notes on her. I may not get there today, but the Lord will have mercy on us. I may not get there today. But her attitude towards life amazed me. Even the attitude of the president, the current president now, Joe Biden, how he continued in life, despite all that happened to him, all the tragedies, he maintained and he got to where he desired in life. So number one, three steps to creating a positive attitude. Learn to speak in the positive words. No matter what happens, look for good and you'll find it. And number three, take charge of your thought life. Take charge of what you think. What you think. Take charge of it. Be in control of yourself. Be in control. And there are three F's in that. Three F's of taking charge of your thought life. Number one, fix your thoughts on what is true and what is good. Fix your thoughts. In Philippians 4 verse 8. Then filter the garbage out of what you hear. Three F's. Fix your thoughts. Filter the garbage out of what comes to your mind. And number three, Feed, feed on proper diet, feed on proper thoughts, take away the garbage. Amen. Many times, what we see people when they become sick is because of food. Most sicknesses are related to food. Amen. What did I say? Majority of the sicknesses that we go that we suffer from are what are linked to food. And the Lord will have mercy. I will stop there. Let's rise up. Amen. I know after this that you will like me. Amen. Why not just thank God this morning quickly? Just appreciate the goodness of God. That from this day, we will demonstrate the right attitude. Just go ahead and bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Give him praise as we rejoice in the presence of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why not say a prayer? Because you're, like we said, the kingdom work, everything depends on the right attitude. After salvation, the, the next core thing is our attitude. I will tell you one thing. You know, in 2017, we were flying every Sunday. My wife and I we were on the plane every Sunday. It's either I fly or she will fly. Every Sunday, we were on the plane. And you know, you may enjoy it, but it's not, it's not easy. We will preach here, and we will be on the plane, and we will preach in another nation. We will preach here, it's either she flies or I will fly. Every Sunday, 2017, 2018, but we choose the right attitude. We did it joyfully. I was telling the sister recently in the church. We did it what? Joyfully. Every Sunday, it's either I'm on the plane or she'll be on the plane. And we did it joyfully, joyfully for the kingdom. Is your perspective of life? Is you can make you can you can change that attitude? It may become oh we are we are to go out for church planting and is and 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 it requires my traveling every Sunday for some just an hour drive. They will not. The Lord will have mercy. Why not just thank God for giving you a right attitude? Say, Lord, I thank you. Because from this day, I receive the right attitude in my work with you. Give me the right attitude so that I can excel. Excellence, we've come to know, is a function of, a, of the spirit. It's not a function of money, how much you have. The right attitude is not by how much you have. It's not by how much education. It's the spirit. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now you are here, you are yet to decide whether you can even start this journey of manifesting the right attitude. The starting point is in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Making the right choice. 
choose Jesus on your way to hell, uh, on your way to heaven, choose the devil on your way to hell. So why not choose Jesus this morning, this afternoon now, and you can start your journey to heaven, on to your journey to manifesting the right attitude in all that pertains to you. So you are here, you want to make a commitment, why not pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I've destroyed most of my relationships, my association, because of a negative attitude. Lord, give me the grace to change all for you. Have mercy on me. I've sinned. Pardon me of all my sins. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. Accept me as your son, as your daughter. Write my name in the book of life. And be merciful unto me so that I can walk with you rightly. If, if you pray that prayer, just make sure you get across the rust. You are here in the ask, just wave your hand. We can just seal it up with another prayer. If you are online, just make sure that you get across the rust and we'll walk with you. Clap, clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We're going to rejoice. Amen. We have just, we'll finish in the next five minutes. Hallelujah. It's a Thanksgiving Sunday, so we want to rejoice in our offering, amen, in our tithes, and in our thanksgiving. Amen. So, uh, we encourage as many of us that can to give digitally, amen, but if you want envelopes, there are envelopes, please indicate they will give you an envelope, but if you can go digital, the details are there, okay, just do, make a transfer, amen, to our PayPal system, our bank transfer system, you can do that digitally, simply, you can go for a standing order, your tithes, your offerings, and then your tithes given. Just indicate your tithes and the different categories you are giving. You are giving towards the media equipment. You can indicate your 1,000 pound, your 500 pound, and by next Sunday, we will announce everything and where we are. We are on 2,000 pound. Amen. Even though I have only 1,000 pound. Hallelujah. Amen. I am hoping that by the next Sunday, I will be confident to say that I've got the 2,000 pounds inside in the account. Hallelujah. So, whichever category you are giving, please make sure, if you want to make a pledge, then put it in the envelope for the media equipment. God bless. Online, those generous online, you can be part of the blessing of giving. You've heard us sharing about uh, buying some new items. Please be part of it and send your, uh, your, your donation across. God bless you. Choir, let's rejoice this afternoon in five minutes that we are closing today.
us and accept our offering in tithes, thanksgiving, in seed, in all that we've given today. Bless it. Bless every giver in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that every pound translate into souls in the name of Jesus. Let it be used to populate your kingdom and depopulate the kingdom of darkness. Thank you, Lord, for those that uh, saying, ah, I wish I can give more. Lord, by next Sunday, do a miracle. In the name of Jesus. And even for the equipment that we are upgrading. Lord, do it quickly. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, please. Okay, sister briefly. Sister briefly. I'm gonna go. Okay, all right. Happy birthday, February. Me. Anyone celebrating birthday? Me. God bless you. Amen. You can come out. Let's pray, pray with you quickly. Anyone celebrating? Birthday, February, God bless you. Anyone, God bless you. Let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah. One happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your daughters and as many joining online that are celebrating birthdays this month of February. As this month is a month of double in blessing, double their blessings victories and successes in every endeavor of their lives. Double it in blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, each and every one of them, we pray that they will live to see another birthday, and another one, and another one, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let rejoice never cease in their lives. In this year of impact, everyone celebrating in the month of February, they will make double impact in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Amen. Please, please, for, for we, need, we need your referrals to come in. If you have someone that needs food items, get across to us with the name and address by Tuesday. Amen. Okay. Just get across to us by Tuesday. That by the time we make our purchase, it's be difficult. So, especially people that we can, we have made the budget for. Amen. Those of us that we know, those that are like the police, we know. Um, so we, we, we work based on the number that we are catering for. So if we don't have your okay, Pastor, I've got one, two, three friends that need it. Please send the number to us. That will make us to make the right purchase and we pass it. Amen. If you get what I'm, so that we can. Get everything ready. If you have 100 people last last Sunday, we did 110 for community and for the, for the green communities. Okay, that is that. Get across to us by Tuesday so that we can do the right 
shopping. Hallelujah. I think that is done now. Let's rise up as we share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Lift your hands and declare, say, I am blessed. See, I'm highly favored. I'm on top and I'm still rising. I am blessed for life and I'm blessed for eternity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in your bubbles, just put the person by your right and left in your bubbles. Do you really love this family? I love this family of God so closely. So closely. God bless you for joining online. We we'll see you on Wednesday by 6 p.m. God bless you.